Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast of the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Katherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. Our text for today uh, is uh, for Resurrection Sunday, which is March 31st, 2024. Um, happy Easter, shall we say? Uh, our text yeah, is Mark. Easter. Our text is Mark 16, and um, as Mark is always short and brief and to the point, we are reading the first eight verses, uh, sometimes called the shorter version of uh, or shorter ending of the story, uh, and uh, we find ourselves um, um, uh, getting a very quick um, uh, rehearsal of uh, the resurrection account. Uh, and um, this particular account, um, well, to set it up, we've just talked about the crucifixion, but uh, a little bit behind that, Judas has betrayed Jesus. Peter's denied knowing him uh, at all. Um, and now in a humiliating public execution, Jesus has been crucified. Uh, and um, we didn't talk about this last week, but um, the others have scattered such that only an unnamed beloved disciple, according to John, and these women are recorded as having been at the cross. And as Mark tells the story quickly and ends with this unexpected event, the women seized by terror and amazement, the women fled and they said nothing to anyone. I get it. I get it. We live in a culture that is divided by class and caste and commitments to sports teams and singers and social agendas. And we know that there are times when we need to be silent. Hmm. So let's be honest. Our context argues more about politics than piety. Hmm. We dismiss discipleship for indoctrination and vainly use the name of God without attending to the claims of righteousness and justice that is really pervasive in the scripture. So I get it. To declare the rumors of the resurrection as true remains countercultural and dangerous now as it was then. But you may remember last week, I began a story about a Jehovah's Witness coming to my house and asking me if Jesus died for our sins on Good Friday, and that's when we experience our salvation, why do we spend our time celebrating Easter? And I admit I was tired. It was Easter weekend. I had a whole lot of things to do as pastor of this church in Battle Creek, Michigan, and um, I wasn't as patient as I probably should have been. And the words that came out of my mouth were, I don't know. It just seems to me that if the entire community had just watched a public lynching and three days later, the guy they killed is on the beach having breakfast with his friends, I think somebody might talk about that for, I don't know, a couple of thousand years. (laughs) And I got to say, I think that's why we have this story. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The women were to tell the disciples, and they must have. In fact, the longer ending tells us that they did, because Jesus indeed did meet them in Galilee. Jesus indeed had breakfast on the beach with them, according to the account written by John. And so... You can imagine that as dangerous as it would have been, these women told that story and the disciples joined them. Yeah, amen. So the story, uh, yeah, passed down from generation to generation. This is, um, yeah, this this is the shortest account of the resurrection in, uh, in the four gospels. And the reason that, um, we've we've chosen to end there is that the some of the most ancient authorities, some of the most ancient manuscripts of the New Testament, uh, including the Gospel of Mark, uh, end here. So uh, obviously, uh, as as always, you preachers are free. Uh, you're free in in the spirit to uh, to 
to end wherever uh, seems right to you. But if you do choose to end uh, after verse eight, I think uh, talking about uh, that, the, the kind of theme that you're talking about, Joy, I think is a helpful one. Because you're right, there's, uh, there's some things we don't talk about right, in our current culture. Uh, we avoid them for, for the sake of trying to keep the peace. Um, and there's, uh, there's certainly um, fear, I think. Uh, uh, we're entering election season. Unfortunately, it seems like we never leave election season uh, in, our, in our politics. But we're we're entering election season this spring uh, for the the general election in November, and the majority of political ads <laughs> that we're going to see uh, prey on uh, or use people's fear, right? Mm-hmm. Try mm-hmm. to appeal to people's fear on both sides, mm-hmm. on both sides. Mm-hmm. And I think some of that is legitimate. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not going to air my own politics here, but uh, yeah, there's there is some reason to have, be concerned, yes. right? Yes. Um, but that's um, that's not <laughs> not what we're called to uh, as Christians. I I was uh, at a I was spoke at a small conference uh, a few days ago, and uh, another one of the speakers, um, Martin Lorman, I'll give him credit. He teaches at Wartburg Seminary, and he, uh, which is another ELCA seminary in Iowa, uh, he said something about the fear of God that I thought was just really insightful. He said. Um, if you uh, if you fear God, you don't fear other things. Mm-hmm. Right? Like the mm-hmm. the fear of God casts out fear of lesser things, and I think that's exactly right. Right. Uh, so uh, the fear that the women feel here, uh, terror and amazement had seized them. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. I don't think that's well, maybe it is the fear of God, but as you said, Joy, they must have found their voices. Uh, they must have gotten over that fear in order to share this amazing, astounding good news. But I think it's it's helpful to remind ourselves that that first Easter was not all Easter, li- you know, wasn't Easter lilies and pretty cotton dresses and you know floral prints. Right. Uh, it was terror. Right. Right. <laughs> Terror first at the you know the death of their teacher right. their their lord, and then terror at the power of God to turn the world topsy turvy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, as you mentioned with the politics, the terror that they too would be cri- cri- killed. Um, yeah. And what did it mean that they uh, you know that 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 they were the ones that were the uh, the ones left behind to tell this story uh, of what God is doing. Um, what yeah. would it mean for them when you use the word Lord? You know, truly, if Jesus is risen from the dead, my God. <laughs> and um, that's, that's a political slap in the face to Caesar, um, who is the Lord of the land. And uh, if you're going to linger there, I, w- I would linger there in that reality we talked about last week of they didn't know what we know now. They didn't know what to expect. Um, mm-hmm. They could not imagine. I, I love the commentary. Um, uh, they could not imagine this because it's impossible. And, um, yeah. you know, to, to be able to believe in the impossible is actually what God's miraculous presence always enables us to do. And that brings about the fear and amazement of God. But outside of God, um, there are real reasons to be afraid of the politicians and um, uh, legal experts of our time in in our society. Um, And so we have to be serious if we say, I'm going to speak against this. I'm going to speak of a God in a post-theistic world. I'm going to speak of the resurrection in a world that doesn't believe. In miracles, I'm going to speak of the promises of God. And uh, as I do that little bit of uh, of litany, the other thing that um, I know we're reading Mark, and we want to be faithful to the uh, perspective that we're reading. But um, uh, my response to the Jehovah's Witness, you know, yeah, but if if this man who's been publicly lynched is eating lunch. 
you know, right. people are going to talk about it. Well, the other accounts that we have include that it was the women who were the first yeah. to bear witness to the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. if we leave the women in silence, which even those who put together the canon went ahead and added to, then we become guilty of not recognizing what we read about in the other accounts, that it is the women mm -hmm. who were at the cross, that it was the women who went to the tomb first, and that it was the women whom Jesus assigned or who the angels assigned to go. Well, in this one, it's Jesus assigning to go and get the disciples. And I love this. And Peter, the one who had denied, the one who had been too scared to admit, Jesus calls him by name. He says, go and get Peter and the other disciples. I'll meet them in Galilee. Um, eventually, the, woman found, the women found their voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's, and, and and that's that, the story we've been telling for 2,000 years. Yeah. Uh, and it's a, it's a pretty um, unique kind of story, right? Like, um, I, I'm sure you've, have you been to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in yes. Jerusalem? Yes, yes. So there's, uh, they quote Mark, if I'm remembering right, they quote Mark. So you go into the sepulchre, right? You go into um, the place at least and the and the the shrine that is built over where the sepulchre, the tomb, the cave was. Um, and as you go out the uh, the above the door, uh, uh, or maybe it's on a banner, I can't remember now, but it says what the angel says. Um, he is you're looking for Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not, not here. here. Right? right? Like the empty, t like so many other uh, disciples, right? They they venerate the tomb of their founder or, yeah. you know, their, but that's, that's not the case yeah. for Christians, right? It's an empty tomb. I'm reminded, I, I told a funny story for Good Friday, but uh, the, 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 the best inadvertent joke <laughs> that I've ever heard. So this is several years ago now. I was I was co-teaching a class on Jewish Christian um, theology or, or interpretation of scripture with my uh, my, uh, my dear friend Jonathan Paradise, who is a uh, an observant Jew uh, here in the cities and a professor, retired professor from University of Minnesota. Anyway, so we have a number of students in the class, and one of them says, "Well, I, I've been to." Israel and uh, and it's it's funny because uh, you know I'm sitting on the bus and I hear uh, things like uh, Abraham may he rest in peace or Jacob may he rest in peace and Jonathan my co teacher he said yeah that's pretty common like that we talk about our you know Abraham or Jacob or Sarah kind of like our uncle Mort right, right? like like there are there are ancestors in the faith we talk about them you know Abraham may he rest in peace. And then he goes on to say, it's funny, I don't hear Christians talk like that. Like, I've never heard anyone say, Paul, may he rest in peace, or Peter, may he rest in peace, or Jesus, may he rest in peace. And, and then there was this silence, and everybody, including Jonathan, burst out laughing. It's like, yeah, we probably would never say Jesus, Jesus may rest, he rest in peace. peace. <laughs> we would definitely never say that, because that would just wipe out the whole, you know, the whole basis of the... Christian faith. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's an empty tomb, yes, right? We don't yes. venerate uh, the tomb. I mean, obviously, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is a wonderful place to visit. It is. It is. Um, but uh, but we don't venerate. Uh, Jesus isn't here. Yeah. He's not here. He's yeah. gone ahead of you to Galilee. That's just a amazing proclamation. Yeah, and, and, and the basis the basis of our hope. That is. That is our hope. And um, I don't know how you want to handle this, which is why I paused there. Uh, I said it was Jesus, and it wasn't. Um, so it was, uh, this This is the problem when you don't stay with the book you're reading. So oh, it is yeah. the angels that speak to the women and tell them to go and find Jesus' disciples. And they include yeah. Peter and right. that's wonderful because Peter has denied, and it is that that in in this what Jesus has done in dying and now being raised by the power of God, 
that we all are restored. And that includes Peter. And and yeah. that's that's good news. And yes, the 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 idea of the empty tomb, that's hilarious. Uh, it, it, as you said, in an inadvertent, in an inadvertent yeah. way, yes. But yeah. So Easter Sunday, uh, uh, there's going to be people there who don't usually come to church. Proclaim the hope of the resurrection and the and the the fact that Jesus uh, is not in the tomb; that the tomb is empty; that Jesus goes before us uh, to 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 guide us uh, and to give us life and give it abundantly. If Jesus hasn't raised been raised from the dead, then as you said, there is nothing. But if Jesus is raised from the dead, then this God is the God who controls the world.